Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us again. Going to be speaking with Dr. Timothy Henry. He's joining us here this morning to talk about a condition that used to be called Syndrome X. Patients were wrongly assumed to be experiencing anxiety or maybe a psychological issue. He's going to talk about this condition and talk about some of the warning signs and developing treatment options available for the condition. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Timothy Henry. Thanks, Neil. It's delighted to be here this morning. Well, give our listeners a bit of your background, your area of specialty, and where it is that you are practicing, and then let's talk about this mysterious syndrome X. Yeah, so Neil, I'm an interventional cardiologist and um, uh, work now. I'm director of the Linder Center at the Christ Hospital in Cincinnati. Uh, Linder Center is a large clinical research center that's uh, associated with our um, cardiovascular practice here at Christ. And um, prior to this, I was chief of cardiology at uh, Cedar sinai in Los Angeles. And I- I've been interested for a long time um, in uh, really the last 20 years. In patients who have chest pain, um, but that are difficult to treat with bypass or stents. And one of those uh, categories is uh, coronary microvascular dysfunction. Um, If you think about, um, you know, blood vessels in your heart, it's a little bit like a tree branch. So you have the big branches, and then the big branches branch out to keep smaller branches. Well, your heart is the same way, and we think of the large arteries in the heart, and that's what you put stints in or what you put, um, you know, do bypass surgery for, and and certainly that's a common problem uh, with people who have blockages in their arteries. But there's definitely becoming increasingly recognized percentage of people who the problem is not with the big arteries, but the problem is with the small arteries that are called, you know, the arterioles and collaterals. And, and those arteries um, supply a lot of blood to the heart. These arteries supply a lot of blood to the heart. They're just as crucial when it comes to CMD as large arteries? Yeah, so it's a really interesting thing, and I, and I think if you think about it this way, um, normally when we're resting, mm-hmm. um, we need uh, so much blood to your heart. But if you go out and go for a run or walk upstairs, your heart's going to need more blood, right? Okay. And what these little arteries do is they expand. So normally, you and I, if we go out and exercise, the amount of blood flow in your that you increase is about three times or four times normal. So you dramatically, the system works well so that you get more blood to your heart. But people who have the coronary microvascular dysfunction, um, their little arteries can't expand. And so they have a decrease in what we call the coronary flow reserve. <laughs> and what we do now is we can actually easily test that People with blockages in the big arteries of heart, they're more likely to have heart attacks, and um, it's a little more dangerous. But the people who have trouble with the little arteries, they still have chest pain, and when they exercise, they feel short of breath. So from a symptom standpoint, it can be just as um, uh, disabling. Now, as far as detecting these early, is there any early detection for this condition at all? How do these people present? So these are are people, and it turns out it's more common in women. Probably 75 to 80 percent of the um, people are women. Um, And uh, what happens is, uh, you know, they have chest pain or they have an abnormal stress test, and then they go and have an angiogram. And then when people do the angiogram, they say, oh, your arteries are normal, and that's the big arteries. But then they're left still, they're still having chest pain. So what we ended up seeing is that these are people who have been told their arteries are normal and are still having chest pain, are still having shortness of breath when they exercise. There's a number of ways that you can actually do the testing, both non-invasive and invasive. Invasive meaning we go to the cath lab, we put a catheter in, and we can actually measure your blood flow. And 
there's a number of different things that can cause chest pain. One of them is the little arteries. What we're talking about today is the coronary microvascular dysfunction. But then there's also some people that have a spasm of their arteries. And so that's the second thing that can cause it. And then there's a number of different things. And so what we do is, this is called coronary reactivity testing. It's very simple, straightforward, it takes about 30 minutes. Um, it does involve, uh, you know, we go uh, either through your wrist or uh, through the groin and um, we take the pictures of the arteries like we normally do, but then we do this special testing to see if you have a normal uh, increase in your blood flow. The CMD won't always show up on, on your regular test. Right, because your big arteries are normal. Now, you mentioned that, of course, it's the most prevalent in women, and it used to be called Syndrome X. We know from history that it was quite common to misdiagnose women, especially with having psychological or, or anxiety issues rather than physiological, especially cardiac uh, issues. Am I correct? Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting thing. And you can imagine why this happens, right? Because here you have a person and they're having chest pain all the time. And then they go in and they do this, you know, the angiogram. And then, uh, you know, someone says, well, your, artery, your arteries are normal. But we haven't looked at the little arteries. And I think, um, so for me, this is a very gratifying situation. We have a very, pro, you know, uh, excellent women's heart program uh, in Cincinnati. Um, and we're really getting people from the whole region now that are coming in because they've had chest pain for years and they, you know, haven't been able to explain it. And I think the nice thing is not only can we diagnose it now, but we also have some very innovative treatments. And so I think our ability to um, improve people's quality of life is improving all the time. So as far as current treatment options for CMD, let's talk about some of the current ones and maybe a little bit about some of the developing treatment options as well. Yeah, so it's a really, really good question. So number one, uh, what we do, because these are still arteries in your heart, uh, number one is treating all the normal risk factors. Stop smoking, get your cholesterol under excellent control because when your cholesterol levels are too high, it makes it so that your arteries don't work as well. And so they don't expand like they should. So we always stop smoking. We uh, treat the cholesterol. We treat your blood pressure. So high blood pressure is another thing that can affect not only the big arteries, but the little arteries. And so we do all of those initial things that we would do um, for um, people with blockages in big arteries. So that's number one. Then number two, we use um, the uh, typical art, um, um, medicines that are for uh, currently chest pain. So like, for instance, nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin works extremely well, um, and uh, we have uh, standard medicines that are already approved, like beta blockers and amlodipine. Uh, so we use kind of our standard ones as well. And many people, we can actually improve their symptoms already just by doing those uh, uh, simple and straightforward things. But we also have a number of really innovative uh, therapies. One is called EECP, um, and um, this is uh, you go once a day, uh, one hour a day for like seven weeks, and you it's cuffs that you put on. It's a little complicated, but um, it, this can be very effective in improving the blood flow to the heart. Um, and then from a research standpoint, one of the really interesting studies we're doing now is we're doing with stem cells. So earlier this year, we published the very first study that showed, um, like, we all, have, uh, we all have our own stem cells. And it turns out those stem cells are the way that we grow new blood vessels. And so we did a, a study where we uh, use a, a medicine to increase your body's own stem cells, and we take those stem cells out and we put them into the heart. And we did 20... Uh, um, and the majority were women, about 90% were women, but um, we treated people that had this coronary microvascular dysfunction, and we showed that you were able to improve your coronary flow reserve significantly. So 
that was a very promising study. And now we just started uh, the second study. It's called the Freedom Study. And so uh, I think this is a, a really unique opportunity for people where you use your body's own stem cells to improve your blood flow to your heart. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Timothy Henry. More information can be found at www.thechristhospital.com. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.